So I just put in the best performing emails from the past and eventually we get to a point where I've hit them on the head too many times. So then we just kind of start sending other best of emails that don't have to do with this offer. And then if they still haven't booked their call yet, we will just kind of throw them in the daily broadcast pool, which is where I'm testing new ideas all the time, right? It's so like the daily broadcasts, like obviously some of them are time sensitive, but they're the ones that can be evergreen. I'm just taking the best ones and adding them to the end of the sequence. So when people opt in, they're getting the very best emails and I know book the most calls. If somebody clicks an email, um, they click the link to go look at the page, but they don't book their call. I have an automation that follows up with them. It's like, hey, I saw you read it. Here's why you should book your call. And that's mainly what I do that works really well. That automation alone is like 10 to 15% extra bookings. I haven't really even tapped into all the replies and stuff, but that's mainly what he does for a lot of our clients. So I'll mm -hmm. let him talk. Who, uh, just out of curiosity, does anybody like work for anybody that like, that's their main thing is like booking high ticket calls or anything like that? Highly recommend. You? You? Yeah, he what, does what, clients. Uh, what do they sell? Uh, confidence coaching. Okay, and uh, how about you? Is it for yourself? No, uh, they business coaching. Business coaching. Business coach. Okay. So one thing that I've noticed a lot is like you'll see emails all the time. That's like cool story. Maybe like they start okay. to kind of like transition to their offer, like towards the end, and that's like book a call and like those work like everyone's been doing them for like I don't know how long but they work one way though that I found that uh, and if you're in the the program I'm sure have you have you guys seen that uh, like my high ticket closing one so you've probably gotten a pretty good idea is sending a reply email that basically talks a little bit about the problem and about an opportunity and then basically say, give me one word, like, yes, if you're interested in like finding out more about this. And then there's like a little system behind it. And I can go down, I'll go down the rabbit hole with you a little bit. I don't want to go too deep because we can talk about, I can talk about this for an hour, but I don't want, I don't want to storm your guys' brains in that way. But what I found though, is a lot of times it's kind of scary, like, Think about like when you're booking a call and you know you're gonna possibly spend a lot of money, right? It's kind of like a little nerve wracking, not in terms of actually booking the call, but like knowing what's on the other side. I'm gonna get on with somebody that I either don't know, um, maybe it'll be the, oop, I gotta come over. All right, I'm over here now. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe you know the person, like if you're getting on with Troy, like cool, like you know, you know the person, you trust them. But most of the time, it's going to be a salesperson, right? We're now sending people to McCollin. So the, th the thing that I know, uh, at least for myself, is that was kind of like, I thought about it. I'm like, okay, how do we make this more personalized in a way that like makes booking a call like seem like definitely the thing I want to do? Not just reading a marketing style, like, you know, direct response email, but reading an email and being like, okay, I'm ready to book a call because I talked about the pain and like I like agitated it. So having a whole bunch of people reply gives you like the opportunity, like they're like raising their hand, like, yes, please email me. Like I'm interested in what you have going on. Like I want to talk more about Those this. Those are talkative people if they're replying. Exactly, right? Like most of the time if somebody like sends a reply email, they're actually taking the time out of their day to like write it. And sometimes I'll just say like, you know, put the word yes, and then next thing you know, I get like a book anyway, just because they want to tell me what's going on. The cool thing with that though, is it gives you an opportunity to make the call seem personalized. Like, because most of the time there's a sales process, right? Like, we're gonna get you in this eight week program, we already know what we're gonna talk, like we already know what we're gonna do, but it gives you this, this sort of format where you can identify their situation, ask, asking them like, hey, you know, they reach out and you go, hey, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, your situation. Like, what are you currently struggling with? Another book. And then you're like, okay, cool. Uh, you know, I've ran into other people that have struggled with this too. Um, what are some things that you've tried? So now we're like, we're identifying like that they know what their problem is, they're voicing it. 
And then now we're, what we're doing is we're seeing like, what have you tried? Because we want them to, I want them to acknowledge what they have tried so that they know this isn't that. They've never done this before. It's like writing copy, but you're just going back and forth. Correct, very, very much the same exact way. And what this does though, is like now when we get to this point with them, because you'll start kind of losing people, you know, they don't check their email all the time, but you're, you're gonna get a lot of replies. Depending on the size of the list, you're gonna get a lot. So now you're starting to kind of weed out the people that aren't ready to do this. You're creating a, um, creating a filtering system, essentially. Especially if it's a high ticket program, you get two of these, it's 10 grand from one email. So it's pretty dope. So um, then the next step is like, hey, you know, we've had uh, other people with that same exact problem. This is what we did with them. Um, is this a priority for you? Now, before the, still before they've even booked a call, they've already said that this is a priority for me. Like, still no, no commitment yet. This is a priority. And then the next one is, well, hey, you know, we could talk more about this. Why don't you book a call? And the people that book those calls, it's like a 90% close rate. And we don't talk about the money, how much it costs at all. And it's simply just because we just got that lead ready before they got on the call, and now the call means something to them. It's not just something, ah, I'm interested, click, book, and then we'll see. Replies are still a weird thing. Like, how often does a big company ask you to reply to them? Right. Don't forget these people are on like hundreds of other email lists from companies who are doing a terrible job and just pitch them all day long. You just want to pique their curiosity at all times, right? Because it's like, curious, 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 and then like book a call is like, uh, but it's like, hey, let's jump on a call um, and see how much more money we can make you. Like we're, we'll do a test on the call. Okay. Like we'll do the audit on the call together. So like it's not a sales call. Like, and McCollin, he sometimes he doesn't sell stuff to people. Like yesterday he had a call, they didn't have an issue, so we didn't sell to them. Like we're just trying to see if the people have an issue and genuinely help them, that's all we're doing. Uh, I, I wrote something, you know, but just out of curiosity, when you guys check in with friends, how many people just like call right away? Just, you can be honest if you, if you do. Depends on the friend. Okay. But mostly I text to check in. Text your friends, text your friends, text your friends. A phone call, especially a FaceTime, but a, fa a phone call is like kicking in someone's door, <laughs> right? We've so got yeah, another so, story about yeah, that one. Uh, all right, uh, knocking on their window, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. It's like, you know, like you look at it, I, I go through it all the time. I'll get a phone call from someone I haven't seen from a while, and I'm like, all right, like, this is gonna be 30 minutes long. What should I do? And then like, I have a decision to make. Do I answer this or do I not? Whereas a text message, little uh, obligation. I can get the text message, I can read it, I can text them back in 10 minutes, I can text them back right away, maybe get it going a little bit, leave it, come back to it. That's essentially what we're trying to do, is so, there's like a, and, and that's why I'm telling you this, is like there's such a big obligation in people's minds with phone calls. If you don't even wanna like call your friends, imagine someone random that you met online. It's like, it's huge. Even if they love what you do, you show them testimonial, testimonial, testimonial. It's like such a big, like, like I said, like I, it's, it's hard to get somebody on the phone. But if you make it to where this is like super low obligation, then make it to where, okay, this is definitely something I need to get handled. Now it's like, okay, I'll book a call with you. We made a calculator too. Like it, it's not hard. It's like, Let's say they're making 10K a month and their open rates are 10%. Okay, you have a problem. Let's say you get to 20%. Now how much are they making? 20K, like it's not hard, but we made a little like Google Sheet calculator with the formulas where you just plug in the open rate and like the money goes up. It's like really simple. Um, and then same thing with list management, like it's like open rates, how many emails they send and like how much they're making a month right now and you can calculate like so much and just like have that and be like, hey, I actually have like um, a, a custom calculator I made. I can show you exactly how much money you're missing out on um, and go over 
how we're going to get it back. Sound good? And they're like, yeah, calendar link. Just play with it, see how it works. Like every time you should be testing something kind of different, kind of curious, kind of new. Same thing with follow up, like never, ever, ever, ever follow up with somebody. Hey, did you read my last message? Did you think about it? Have you had time to look it over? Like, don't do that. Like pitch them on something curious. Hey, I have one more idea that made 5K for a client yesterday. You wanna hear it? I wanna hear that. That's how you should follow up with people. Uh, and then one last, uh, so this, this email, this is something that like we use for like deliverability stuff, but I found I used it for uh, a reply email. This reply email, I think by the end of like, after like some of the sales came in, made like, like $62,000 in, and in, like when I sent this, um, it was subject line test and then hey, do you want to test out like this thing uh, for your problem? Reply with the email, uh, reply with the word test. And it's just like, test, 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 in this inbox. That was by accident at first because we yeah. had a client with the spam problem, literally nothing inboxed. And then I just got frustrated. So I put test <laughs> as the subject line and it went through. And then like I had to be careful with the copy. So then the email is just like test. Hey, first name, would you like to test out a new style? This for a clothing company. Here's the link. <laughs> or like reply and let me know. And yeah, it wasn't a reply email. That one was the one with the link in it. And that one like outsold all their other emails. And I was like, wow, I think we're onto something here. So not only does that work for inboxing, but whether you're getting replies or you're selling something, like it's just a pattern interrupt because they think their friend is like sending them something to test. So that's a good one too, right? So it's like playing on their ego. I'm not that aggressive, but let's say that someone is saying at the end of the call that they're like, oh, I just need to go talk to my partner, which one of the things that we try to vet them before the calls, if you have someone that needs to get your approval, then let's get them on the call as well, right? Because if you're having a middleman, you're talking to someone else and things are gonna be lost, right? So if they still at the end, if they say that they need to talk to someone, like, do you own your business? Like, I have a question for you. Do you own the business? Yes, I do. And like, yes, uh, I do. I do own the business. It's my business. I'm like, so can't you make the decision yourself? Wouldn't they be happy? You know, like, is, 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 are you not able to make decisions yourself? They're like, nah, 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 I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> so then they buy. So that's another cool one. Like, play on their ego. Yeah. It's a good one because people are egotistical. Yeah, like, it's not like a bad thing about people. It's just like, we're humans. Like, this is how we're wired. Like at the end of the day, we care about ourselves more than anyone else. Now there's people that are very close to that, I but like question. humans. But before you get to that point, do you want to ask him at some point during the conversation, the email conversation before the call, is there going to be, do you require someone else to make a decision? That's one of our, the questions yeah, in the question, type form. Yeah. So like when they fill out the application, we try to ask them that, but some like people lie too. They want to, yeah, yeah. you know, people are liars as well. Yeah. So they'll be like, oh yeah, I can make the decision. And they hop on, they're like, mm, actually I can't. I need to go talk to nine other people. And you're like, okay. I talk you to my dog about this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And another thing is too, is it's, you have to realize too that they could actually be lying about that as well. They might not need to go talk to someone. I just had this situation that happened a couple days ago that he told me one reason why he needed to go talk to someone. And then after he was completely fucking lying. He had a whole nother reason why he wanted to not, he wanted to go talk to other people that have joined the program to see like the prices that they paid before. And he's like, actually the real reason why I wanted to go talk to Gabby is because of this. Like, okay, so remember that as well, that people are not always gonna tell you the truth. So if you dig at them, then you can like try to get it out of them. And again, it goes to trust and confusion because he heard about somebody else we closed six months ago who had a 10% deal going on and he thought he could get the same one. So he didn't trust us that we, like, they will rarely tell you that's the reason why. But it's like he didn't understand, it was six months ago, and that guy has a $27,000 program. I'm cool getting 10% of that every time we make a sale, but this guy's selling something that's low ticket. Like, I don't want 10% of that. Like, it's different people, different offers, but it, the trust killed that one. Um, it ended up not being a good fit, so it's like, it's okay. Like, not everybody's a good fit, so. Yeah, don't be afraid to offend people either. That's another thing. Like, obviously, you don't want to be an asshole, but you can still press people and figure out why they're actually trying to not buy right now. A lot of people, too, they want to hop off the call because they just don't want to be 
forced to make a decision right now. So that's another thing that you can play on your ego. It's like one of the reasons why you're not making a lot of money right now is because you are not able to make these decisions, right? How do you expect that you're ever going to be able to level up if you can't just make a decision right now?